for and something brand new and unbelievably powerful is about to come in. Right. And at some point, it's probably not going to, it's going to be something that, you know, I just, I really anticipate, I want to get into this, especially the chip part of that here in just a second, but I do see, I see like something happening in, I don't know what point in the future, I wouldn't say near future, but something to do with that requiring Christians to do something that they just can't do, you know, you know, like something that will separate people because normal people won't see anything wrong with it, but Christians will. And that's going to be the dividing line. You know, it'll be something slick, insidious, probably something that's very, very easy to, you know, kind of think, well, maybe if I do this and certainly, you know, everything can keep on going like it is, it won't seem like much, but it'll be something like that. And I think something certainly like the chip, obviously would be an obvious thing, but I think it could be even more insidious before we even get to that point. But um, one thing I wanted to mention about the chip, I was trying to find it here where it says it, but if anybody has it, they can put it put it in the chat room, which I encourage everybody to go to if they're uh, listening to this on the archives. You can go to TalkShoe.com. We do this, and you can find out when the next show will be scheduled. But um, I always have said before that it seems like the chip will be something that when you take it, it – it, 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 you know, it kind of everybody for a long time has always thought that it'll just be some kind of rule. It's some kind of rule that God set. If you take the chip, then you know I'm going to be really mad at you. You don't have any more chances. Like it's just some kind of rule he made up. But I think, like most of the laws he makes, they are made for our um, for our benefit because he knows more than we do about it. It's like a father telling his son not to put your hand on the hot stove because he knows better than the son that his hand you know will get burned. And I think the chip like what you're talking about there really made me think about it, that that it will do something to people to actually make them unable to, at that point, turn to God. It, it will be something that will make it physically impossible for them to um, to do it. And so I think that's why I'm saying you don't take the chip. Don't take the chip. Not so much about, like, I'm going to be mad, but you're not going to be able to to help yourself if you take it. And all this technology we talk about, um, we talk about singularity and all this stuff and just nanotechnology and everything just getting crazy. And I, and you got to you got to just look at the way things are going. I mean, it's go, it's being it's getting crazy, yes, but it's getting crazy for a single purpose. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say a single purpose, but for a multitude of purposes around a single agenda, and that's that agenda is Satan's agenda. I mean, he's speaking through the minds of a lot of these people, these scientists and military brass and everything. I mean, it's just all that that singularity is going to be focused against Christians, in a sense, and against people. Uh, so, so wow, it's just going to be some serious business going on. Yeah, I'll take it a step further. I, I'd like to know why this grid thing has to be tied in with the particle accelerator and playing around with uh, the God particle and trying to recreate the Big Bang and find hidden dimensions. It's its all the same system. And, uh, you know, no one's talking about having to take a chip right now, and no one's going there. And I, like you said, you know, I, I really believe that uh, when you take the chip, it's not necessarily going to be that, uh, you know, you are just automatically, like, damned to hell, but by default, because you will be under some kind of mind control at that point, that they'll they'll be able to control your thoughts and, and, and whatnot, that you won't be able to. I mean, you know, I, I, I talked about this before, but the Bible basically says that, you know, people will be gnawing their tongues out because of the suffering that they're going to be going through. But no one, no one at all is going to repent. No one's going to repent. Once they take the chip, there will be not, no one, not one person that is going to stop and say, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong here. I shouldn't have done this. I'm sorry. You know, God, I'm so sorry. It's just going to be something where no one at all repents for it. So, you know, just, you can look that up or I'll, <clears throat> I'll try to find the verse. Actually, I, I can do that and try to stick it in the chat room. But uh, it, the Bible does say that. Yeah, talk just real, real quick about that. So, is that like the actual um, press releases they're talking about CERN and all and this this uh, this um, network being? That's what they're going to do. Like, hey, guess what? We're going to try to tap into other dimensions. <laughs> I mean, that's what they're yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah. I was that's actually true. on the website, and it's like, what are we doing? Looking for missing dimensions, hidden dimensions, uh, uh, dark matter. 
et cetera, et cetera. That's why they're worried about opening a black hole. I mean, yeah, literally. Well, yeah, oh, man. Okay, you got to go to your manager and be like, hey, um, Bob was talking to me, and uh, I wasn't paying attention, and I think we kind of opened up a black hole. I'm not sure, but you might want to go check, take a look. Yeah, it's a big deal. And if you look at if you look at the pictures of this thing, I mean, that's not. I mean, it looks like something that could probably open up some dimensions, you know. And I look at it. I, I really do. You know, I look at this ELF grid, the and I, and of the cell phone grid, and how weird it is. They chose the one single most interesting band ever, and it's this band that has to do with basically kind of our neurotransmitters of our thoughts. And in addition to, if you wanted to actually go buy um, a meter to find out how much ELF uh, frequency is in your given area, if you go online and type in ELF meter, you're going to find people trying to sell it to like ghost hunters and stuff. And these meters go crazy when there's ghosts in the room. And, you know, if you kind of get an idea what most ghosts are, then they're just masquerading as different things. But generally speaking, somebody's opened a dimensional door to um, an evil entity, then, you know, you've got this picture starting to develop that they're trying to open dimensions with a lot of electrical stuff. And you start to think, and you and what the most interesting part is, look at the scientists. Look at the people who are the leading people in the field. Once you get an idea get a bead on what kind of fields are the ones that are having to do with this, find the top scientists, find out who they are, kind of look into their history, and all of a sudden you're seeing the craziest story develop. There's these people that lead double lives um, and are interested in the most opposite things, but it's all very, it's like very half spiritual and half, um, you know, half very technical. And usually the military is thrown in there somewhere, so... I don't know. We've got an interesting thing happening. Right. And the, uh, the verses I'm talking about, Revelation 16 and 10 and 11. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and sores and repented not of their deeds. So, you know, these people that follow the beast do not repent. And all the, you know, the stuff that they go through, they do not repent. And I, uh, I posted up the article um, or the website here, the CERN. It's uh, for those of you that are listening in the, uh, in the archive, if you type in public.web.cern.ch slash public slash en slash science slash dimensions hyphen en Dot .html, you will find a page, CERN Secret Dimensions. And it's like Secret Dimensions beyond the third dimension. And you get some idea of what they're actually doing with this thing. And then you can try to figure out why that needs to be tied in with the new Internet system. So I have no idea. Yeah, let me interject there, too. If anybody's listening on one of the widgets, um, the little things that are posted on our respective websites, and you want to join in on this, you can go to talkshoe.com, T L K S H O E.com, and do a search for the Frank and Chris show, but it should be right there on the front page of the live shows, and you can join that and see the numbers to call when if we're about to take calls and everything, So, and you can join the chat room and all that stuff. So, All right, anything else you got? That's about it. All right, I guess we can uh, start taking calls. I guess, uh, let's see, who who's first here? I think it was New York. All right. New York, are you there? Hey, Frank and Chris, how you doing tonight? Hey, what's up? Doing good. Hey, I'm I'm a big fan of your shows. I, I, what, I'm, what I'm curious about your thoughts on would be all the talk about um, Pope John Paul II. What would you think of those, them talking about that possibly could be the Antichrist? I saw some interesting uh, YouTube clips about that. Well, he's dead, so if, we, if he if he is, then he's got some uh, serious catching up to do, or some serious right. work well, to do. What what they claim, uh, the things I watched, they said that they um, there are strange things, aspects about his burial, and they claim they're going to try to imitate, you know, like Antichrist, the replacement of Christ, or whatever. 
would be um, that he they would mimic his resurrection by bringing back this dead pope. Like there was a lot of satanic things they did when they buried Pope John Paul II. They had a silk skull and crossbones on the lead part of his casket when they buried him. And there's a lot of weird little things. They, well, everything with the Catholic Church seems weird to me. Hmm. But it was just a well, different. I would say I would say that um, that's definitely a possibility. I haven't seen exactly what you're talking about, but um, I would say just from things that. Um, you know, like I was mentioning earlier, like Father Malachi Martin and some of the stuff that he's talking about, and a lot of the stuff that it does in general. Again, I'm not talking about your everyday Catholic or anything like that. But like innocent guy, right? But it seems like that there probably was a good deal of ritual involved. I mean, I'm not saying I, I didn't see it, but I would imagine from other things that I've seen that there probably was a lot of the things that you're saying uh, involved with a burial, like like they would do it, like in a Masonic burial. You know, it's very very meticulous, a lot of things going on there, and none of it none of it good symbolically. So I would say that that is probably true, um, and it would be that at that point for me a jump to say it would be anything. It could, I mean, it could be. Hey, you know what? Anything can happen when we're talking about this kind of thing. But I would say it probably is just true that the rituals were present, but probably a jump to say it was anything like that. Number one. You know, this guy's supposed to be a pretty good uh, a speaker, and that guy, you know, uh, he has a lot to, <laughs> a lot to go there. But that's uh, true. <laughs> that's true. How would how would uh, listeners email you guys stuff that you would be able to? I, I want to send you the clip so you could see it, and then you could take it or leave it as you will. Yeah, please do. Uh, my email is chris c h r s at conspiracyclothes dot com, and Frank. Uh, you can hit me at revelations. Pcast at AOL.com. I've actually seen a couple of clips about that. And uh I I didn't see anywhere there was like a skull and crossbones or anything on his on his casket or whatnot, but uh after looking into more of the uh the Maitreya Benjamin Krem stuff and looking at a lot of the Islamic prophecies for the end times I, I could see, and again, you know, you could see anything talking about this stuff or thinking about this stuff, but look at all-star who's who of uh, former religious leaders popping up. I mean, I don't know how, but it, it certainly seems like at least Benjamin Krem talks a lot about these uh, divine masters showing up, and there's 10 of them or 12 of them or something, and Muhammad is one of them, and Jesus is one of them, and the Buddha is one of them, and you, know, you go down this list of all these uh, former humans that once had this uh, divine spirit of the Christ within them. I don't know if uh, if John Paul would fall into that realm or not, but it it wouldn't surprise me if at some point there was a, some kind of a quote unquote like all star, you know, religious all star group that just pops <laughs> up to like fix everything. Uh, you know, right. just something to think about. Yeah. But my only other question for you guys tonight would be: You guys are always referring to as like the dummy news, like Yahoo or AOL. What would you guys recommend as like an intelligent news source? That's that's the question of the of the decade, Frank. You you'd be a, you'd be a one to ask that one. Yeah, honestly, the uh, the way that I think is the best way to get your news is to find the same story from as many different sources and cross reference them. And I, I, I tend to think that most of the news we get is dummy news from the best and most reputable sources. Um, you're always going to be trusting someone to tell you the truth and uh, not to have an agenda and everything else. So I don't know. I think that what you'll find is that there really is no real, uh, completely honest, really reputable news source out there. I like... Uh, I like some stuff on World Net Daily and whatnot, but I mean, even they're skewed to one side or the other on too much. So I don't know. It's just one of those things where you just look a lot and pay attention. And, and really, I think the more you look at stuff, the more you're going to find that you're really not getting accurate news from anywhere. Yeah, yeah, and you could be surprised though. I mean, how much you can actually understand about what's going on by just looking at the news of as saying to yourself, "This is what they want me to think," and then. You know that speaks volumes a lot, a lot of times, um, about what's. I mean, maybe not what's going on in the world, but what you should, you know, just be 
worry about it. You know, I, I, I was 